Hello everybody and welcome back to another stream. I'm Roger Hansen and today I have Karma Love with me. If you want to say hi Karma, feel free to. Hi everyone. Um, this uh, topic today is going to be on conspiracies and conspiracy theories. Um, with that being said, I'm going to get started on the topic. Um, let me grab something real quick out of my files, uh, Karma. I wanted to actually uh, read something that I had written a while ago that uh, kind of gets an idea across of what I've been talking about when it comes to conspiracies and stuff. Um, okay. It's kind of like my take on a lot of it. I, I've actually gotten into them, or I, I've gotten into them more than what I have most other things. And um, I think this will pretty much uh, uh, sum it up on a lot of the stuff that I have. Um, if I can get it. Yeah, here it is. Um, let me read this real quick, and uh, it'll kind of get an idea of where I'm going with it. I uh, did a video series on YouTube called Into the Abyss, and uh, I had a, a note in my notepad that I did on the computer for it, and I want to I just share it. Because without shame, most people are cowards, filled with greed and vanity always competing for resources, power, and uh, notoriety. In order to gain these things, it's required that the masses must be controlled and influenced. In order to acquire resources, blood has to be spilled, and our young have to be sacrificed for the greater good. Life for a life, for the sake of the spring, blood no, blood uh, sacrificed in order for the water to flow. Lotteries created evolved into wor uh, words like the draft. And our children soon march blindly into death's shadow. This was all done in the name of patriotism. Still we are told that we must sacrifice our young for the sake of the many. And we do not take a moment to figure it out. We and the elites are not one and the same. We are segregated with two separate purposes and standards. The rich enjoy their wealth by manipulation through standards and symbolism. While eg exiled in Babylon, the Jewish created their texts in order to retain their identity as God's chosen people. They were living with pagan barbarians, of course, weren't they? People who worship gods by laying in their own excrement yet understood the moon cycle by the 5th century BC. It is also a wonder how Babylonian ideology found its way into the Talmud and then eventually into the Quran. We are placed in positions according to, accordingly if we if we are smart enough, though, we can climb our way out of the cesspool through the use of fame, intellect, money, and beauty. Even then, though, we are still called upon to sacrifice ourselves or loved ones for the greater good. The greater good, of course, is a small percentage of people who enjoy living in penthouses or in the south of France. It's all about wants and needs, and the object of the game is the rich manipulating the poor in order to gain what they want, usually by monopolizing resources, then extorting us with laws that we then submit to without disagreement. It is only with laws. No, it's only when laws affect the elites negatively that those laws change. Poor people and their families are nothing more than pawns on a chessboard. Still, the ruling class was gracious while they, uh, while they changed from kings and queens into elites, changing their personas and status while meeting their growing needs. 
building towers that climb above their surroundings, overwhelming us in hypnotic spells of grandeur. We worship the, the, the Eiffel Tower, Golden Gate Bridge, and even the Twin Towers that fell in recent years. The blood of children is smeared upon the foundations of those structures, but do we care? We place our vanity at the doorstep of two buildings while victims still perish today. We send our children off into the darkness and some don't return. The world is actually overpopulated and some believe that sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. This seems to be a common theme in every issue too, but what is the greater good though? WHO? The World Health Organization actually has statistics on how many people are estimated to die within the next 50 years. John found out too, in order for the uh, environmentalists to achieve what they want, carbon levels in the atmosphere need to go down to 165. In 1985, carbon levels were at 225. By the year 2000, and by the year 2000s, levels were down to 185. In order for carbon levels to make it down to 165, the human population has to decrease. With a population of over 7 billion, we can't achieve a carbon level of 165. In other words, population control is top priority in geopolitics. To achieve these goals, people must die and sterilization laws enforced. How proud we were when those towers were built with foundations strong and sure. Under these towers, a spring was buried filled with chaos and fury so pure. This is a poem, a battle raging so strong and silent and the people without a clue hidden away within isolated bubbles so far away from the world and all of its troubles. The earth began to rumble and the ground began to shake while foundations began to crumble and those towers fell to the floor. Under the foundations we found two enemies battling one another, each burning with hatred, neither more furious than the other battling over the spring, neither wishing, neither wishing the bloodshed to end, though if the bloodshed ends, the earth will no longer rumble, the ground will no longer shake, and the towers will no longer fall. Brainwashing was with po uh, propaganda, listening to stories that are told, boys and girls wish to adventure, glossy-eyed young, and wanting to shoot a gun while playing with black powder. Searching for adventure, fortune, fame, they travel to far off lands. Mystery and adventure is all they see. Yet, the more that is seen, the more they want and the more will be revealed. So sail across to that far away land, map the skies as they go. The young shall create, not destroy or be hypnotized. No, the young should create, not destroy, or be hypnotized and mesmerized either. Kids, though, will see what they only wish to see. When they go just over that hill, they will see what, once, what was once golden orchards, pastures once filled with rose petals, now nothing but scorn, uh, scorched land. Looking towards the horizon, they will speak of way back when, remembering how it used to be, when grass grew green and we were truly free, while in the back of their minds lay all the shame, what they truly became the day they decided that they had to be, that the day they decided what they had to become, the lies they fell for and the leaders they followed who selected selected only the best of the stock, those who decided who shall live and who shall die. And that's the end of it. But that was one of the last things that I uh, ended up writing about the subject. I uh, 
Or that was the last You wrote that? Yeah, I wrote that. Nice. That's, uh, the, I believe that was the last, uh, thing that I did for that series on YouTube. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, whenever I talk about conspiracy theory, that's kind of what I'm getting at, you know? Um, I, I think uh, there's a, a lot of people out there who, who honestly believe that, you know, these things that are going on in our day-to-day -day lives aren't a part of the conspiracy when it's not the truth. It's like right there in front of our faces. We just don't see it because it's been happening for so long, you know what I mean? Yeah, have you ever heard of the Dredge of Guidestones in Eberton, Dredge? Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, that's... Yeah, it, right, it's written in stone that's about true. the separation of the languages, then it, what languages should sustain, as well as the population control agenda, New World Order. If, uh... That, that was the one thing about, uh... About, uh... Um chemtrails that I'd like to have him on, on here for because like he really gets into stuff like that you know what I mean he, he really talks about it and everything with his uh with with his uh record or streams I guess you, or no uploads videos so I mean, yeah <laughs> I, I have my disagreements with some of the stuff he says because he, he believes that it's uh, connected to like aliens and things like that. But like I like uh, there's there's people who believe in aliens who believe like there's this contract that keeps aliens away from the humans. So as long as they, we follow that contract, we're okay. And I was I told him in a comment I'm like I I don't believe that if there's a aliens that had all that technology and were so much more advanced than us they would you know abide by a contract between earth and aliens from outer space i just don't i don't feed in but if they're not aliens are just higher form of intelligence and also too they're not combative aliens are more loving and more friendly than we are um because we're actually uh, like i don't want to say trickle down versions but again, our DNA has been altered because initially we started out, I don't want to say we started out as aliens, it's not true, but the same genetic capabilities, the D our DNA, we had the same makeup and it was in stored in us. But then, like I said, there was a separation. Again, the same thing for the desire of power, um, kind of like from the separation of bicameral mindset where we were two hemisphere at what well, excuse me, where we were operating on one hemisphere and then we go from one to having two and then the separation of actual logical thinking and doing as opposed to just actionary and turning towards doing stuff based off of instinct. Um, I, I don't want to say that the contract, I don't want to say it's not true because on the IRS um, documents, and I, I think I shared it in your chat too, just even with like some of the communications and some of the quote unquote requests, it's an actual contract of saying, hey, yeah, stay away from us. But you can see where there are um, relationships and correspondences with foreign life. And here I am in these circles again. I, I, I like walk in circles <laughs> when it's just crazy. But um, here they are, like I said, not, I don't want to say that they are like, oh, we're telling them to stay away. It's kind of one of those things to where it, there's no real reason to not. And to the point where because of the separation, because of a negative influence, negative impact, the negative um, connotation put on their presence, it was more of, it's like one of those things, they don't do drama. And I know that as a surprise, everyone thinks that aliens would walk around and want to fight, but they're not. They're very loving, loving beings. And they would prefer to project love, but we don't project that type of love. And so if there was a excuse me, desire for an invasion, quote unquote, or a war, it would be as a result of, excuse me, in the name of love, as crazy as it sounds, it would be to restore the natural order in which we came, in, which we came from. And, or 
which we started from. I don't want to say we came from it because not everyone has come from it. Some people still operate in that standard. It's just a lot more, a lot more difficult to operate at such high functionality in regards to what's important when we're, again, we're projecting something else as what the standard is. I have to mute for a second. You know, there's like actually like three or four different camps in uh, the belief of aliens, right? Like, yeah. Well, I didn't know there was so many or how many um, in particular. My knowledge, again, comes from more experience and just actually talking to these beings and talking to these creatures and talking to other um, beings. And I, I, I'm not one to run to social media as soon as something amazing happens to me. I'm not going to, like, put my homie, the Pleiotian, I'm not saying that this is true. I'm not going to put him on, hey, look, I want you to get on my YouTube real quick so no, I can I mean, get on my life. No, no. I mean, like, like, people that believe in it, like, there's, like, three or four different... Uh, uh, takes on it like you you've got the palladians like you said and there's a lot of people that believe that they're about you know loving humans and taking care of them and stuff like that then you've got people who uh just downright believe they're evil and they want to yeah. take over the earth then you've got people who believe that freaking they've already been here for thousands of years and they're not trying to take us over or destroy us or show us love. They're just trying to kind of like. Um, Have you seen Men in Black? They're, they're, they're kind of. Like Have you seen the movie Men in Black? Yeah, I've seen it, but I'm saying they're trying to guide guide us in the right direction and, and like uh, stuff like that. But there, I mean, there's like at least four of them. Is all I'm I'm saying. Like, not not everybody that believes in. Aliens. No. Because you were, you said someone believes there's a group that believes they've been here. I say imagine them just being in human form. That's why I was reading it to Men in Black. How they would come and they would turn to me. They would just be able to turn into human, and you didn't know that you were dealing with an alien. Well, I mean, some yeah. people know, but well, you know what I mean, like that type yeah. of thing. Um, could you imagine something, or do you fathom something like that being what happens, or? That's, possible how do you feel about that type of situation that uh actually goes across the ske uh, spectrum um, I, I i wouldn't say i wouldn't say all of them but pretty much all of them believe that there are aliens that are on earth that can actually disguise themselves to where they look like us and uh david ike we were talking about him uh before and uh that was one of uh, the examples. He, he when he first started out, he, David Ike was actually a, a football player, according to, to like over in England, which here in the United States it'd be a soccer player. He was an athlete, and uh, he turned journalist. And just out of the blue, one day he he sitting there and he said that he was God. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, he got a lot of controversy over that, and he began to uh, talk about uh, how he, he was, uh, or how reptilians were here on Earth, and that he had seen them. And that created a, uh, a stir, too, you know what I mean? So, um, in that aspect, there's there there are people who've been talking about that but he he wasn't nice about the whole reptilian thing like he he believes that the queen of england or the one what's her name uh she's the one that just passed away yeah queen elizabeth he, he believes she was a reptilian he believed 100 percent she was a reptilian and he there are a lot of reptilians um she's not the only one and she was not the only one and she's still here she's not dead but okay so when you're talking about people having a disconnection about like the God complex, quote unquote, but like saying that you're God, like if you watch and if you read and you do researches, like we are <laughs> and like not well, just I mean, me. I'm not, I'm not, you know I'm not I mean? saying that I have, I'm saying that's what happened with him. I, I, Why I'm, people disconnected from him. Yeah, because he was telling the truth. Right. Absolutely. He just mm -hmm. out of nowhere, you know, it just came, came out. And he what did he? He say he's in swear. Like, where did he experience for him to have these type of revolutions, revelations? Excuse me. Well, I mean, I, I heard there's video footage of when it happened, but I'm not sure. I haven't been able to find it. Okay. I, I heard that he was on uh, 
he was on stage whenever he was doing his announcements when he said it. Um, he just blurted it out. But I've, I've yet to find it, so I don't know exactly when that happened. So, but uh, <laughs> the queen... what do you think intimidates people most about? Oh, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. You go ahead. I was going to ask you, what do you feel as though intimidates people most about the concept of them being in complete control or complete power, or as you, as he said, God? Like, what, what, what do you? as though would make someone feel that uncomfortable about this type of concept well because people are trying to get rid of the concept of God first of all okay like there's a, a, a large group of people in this world today that just do not feel that our um, generation or our yeah, our, 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 our generation in this day and time, they, they don't feel that it's necessary to worship anything, you know what I'm saying? That uh, we've pretty much decided that God doesn't exist, and so we need to, to just get rid of that, you know what I mean? They, which, I mean, don't get me wrong, I ain't saying I agree with that at all. I'm not, that's not even... No, 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 I'm listening to you. You're just, no, but there this are, is just information. I'm not, you know, this is not your, yeah, we're just having a normal conversation. No, I mean, this no, isn't a, oh, you're, so you're a God, non-believer or anything. No, 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 I get that. But, but there, I was just wondering what would you feel? Are, there are people out there that are doing that, and um, that's another thing that... Well, that's been forever. I mean, no, it's, it's like they... They're, they're trying to say that it's freaking, I mean, you're teaching your kids about God is like child abuse, according to some of them. You know what I mean? Uh, what's I know, I've heard that as well. And making them go to church is, yeah, they, I saw, I saw memes about kids going to church being child abuse. Like, I'm not big on church at all because that is propaganda that is definitely religion has been monetized like i said um before you can you learn a lot about it with that ring of power movie when you're talking about the vatican being in control of religion and then the um, england being in, in control of the money and then us in control of the military so well the united states but what i'm saying is i understand that the propaganda is there definitely but to have disbelief and a power outside of yourself, I always ask people to supply their own oxygen. But they're not to use anything. They're not able to use anything. Like, no, do not use any supplies or anything that has come from God or a source or universe or the sustainability that was before them. Only from in, within self. So they have to supply their own supply of oxygen, their own type of food. And if they can grow this out of their butt crack, I say that, but I know that's just extreme. If they can, then by all means, I'll believe there's no power. But gets, until someone starts growing I, the cherry tree from... See, that's what it kind of gets what I was talking to you about yesterday, okay? And it's like, uh, you, you just said that, okay? And it's like I said, you, you plant the seed but you don't have any power over freaking that 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 tree. I mean, you can't make it grow straight and long. You know what I mean? You can't stop a tree from freaking slanting to the side. You, know, you can't make sure that it freaking grows 100% perfect. There's just no way. To, you don't have that kind of control. Okay. As a matter of fact, humans think that they have so much control that it's ridiculous because in reality we don't have that much control um i was having an argument with uh what's his name i keep calling him the mexican but um he he, he, he was on chat and he kept arguing with me about this fact you know and and all i was trying to say is on a physical level our bodies are not the most superior freaking body bodies out of all the animals on the planet you know what i'm saying they're like animals have freaking amazing bodies just the structures of their body you know and he he took it from that level all the way up to god's creation we're the chosen ones you know what i mean that, that still doesn't come up with the fact but see that that's you, why we that you me. but on a physical level with no tools no intellect nothing okay our bodies are not set up as perfect as what a lot of these other creatures are 
you know, there's animals that can run faster than us. There's animals that can freaking hunt better than us. There's animals that you just don't want to meet out in the woods by yourself. You know what I mean? Like the well, that and that was before we dimmed our mind. Before we became our 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 third eye became so calcified. Like nowadays, I can agree with you for how it is, but it's not something that we're unable to achieve again. It's not completely out of reach anymore. So I can also understand on the spectrum. Well, uh, well, look of still at it, believing look at, it. Look at it this way, okay? All you got to do is is watch maybe a month of Naked and Afraid. And... <laughs> I've seen that. That show is <laughs> okay. so funny. Those people are, are so... I mean, I don't want to say... Because they're going out there. Like, I feel like when you mess with Source for the wrong purpose, first of all, you're, com you're just, basically doing it for go, money. Go out in the woods and, and get butt naked and try to survive. Mm -hmm. That, that, that's all you gotta do. Man. That just sounds like a Saturday night to me, but I feel you. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm wild, man. I, I don't know for, for sure how long they, they stay oh out there. A lot, I, I've never actually seen any of them finish the competitions, to be honest with you. No, I don't know anyone that has, but I don't watch that. I've watched like a few episodes. I don't watch TV. My sister. I watch, it, watch, I watch TV show. strategically. Like, I have to look for stuff. But it. it you know, and, for and me, we're talking about this, and then I received an email from the Illuminati saying they want to pay me a million dollars a week. That's amazing. The first benefit of my million dollars. It's so funny. I'm talking to you, and the Illuminati is attempting to recruit me. Mm, anyway. Oh, you've already been recruited. It's just spam. You, you, know you said that. you thought I've been recruited? You already know that, right? Like, you know what? That Have you graduated from high school? There we go. Right? Yeah, I did actually. You know that ritual sure. they made you uh, go through when you got up there on the, or when you had to go and sit down. I don't know if you got up on the stand to take your diploma or not, but I don't even like. What did we do for our graduation? It was just so where I graduated from. Like I was in did, New Jersey, did they like make Glasgow you, High, like, like walk down the aisle and everything in a certain way and wear that funny little hat. Yeah, the hat thingy, yeah. You got recruited. The moment you you were involved in all that stuff, you became a part of the old, old boys club right there. That's where all that stuff started, man. It started from the Rosicutions. So, I mean, well, there's no really evidence that the Illuminati was like as big as <laughs> You are welcome said, to the Illuminati Brotherhood family. <laughs> this is funny but i'm just reading this it's just like yeah okay and i mean well i have the nuevo tech book I, i'm not this is not the first attempt of recruiting but i got to be fair when the book was sent it was sent to my now ex-husband but he just he was incarcerated and the dates on it was the time that he would remain incarcerated so it was pretty much hey this is your responsibility are you going to respond hey i'll bite what are you talking about? Because I didn't know what you people are talking about. So they send this um, entry pantry, this or orient um, orientation pamphlet. Now the orientation pamphlet is full of crap. And I'm like, man, this is nonsense. By now he's out and we're reading it together. And I'm like, this is nonsense. We're not gonna deal with this. We're gonna light this stuff on fire. So we lit the entire orientation pamphlet on fire, all down to ashes. Tell me why like the next day or two days later, parts of the orientation pamphlet, but it looked like it had been singed or burned, was on our patio. And I'm like, wow, this is so crazy. Like, I believe in Illuminati. I know who we, I know who they are. I'm very aware of their presence and their power and what they are capable of and what they do do and what they do not do. That's why when people are um, anti-Illuminati, it's like, yeah, you can be anti against the evil stuff, but I, I'm kind of their type of person that is going to say hey the stuff you're doing is some bull crap like who how dare you disturb our slumber and it's like yeah i disturb it what are you gonna do <laughs> like yelling in my face you know what i mean it's like yelling in my face disturb like no you're not going to eat my slumber. kid what do you mean <laughs> you, you, you just like, say disturb our slumber. and so slumber. like like they're all just sitting around having a big old nap and shit like yeah dude we're just out here chilling and you have to come along and ruin our slumber what the fuck's wrong like they're having a siesta or some shit <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a <laughs> siesta. <laughs> right, right. Oh <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You get it. You just totally get it. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're like, no, it's not happening. Uh, 
can't. It's not happening. It's not and it is, you know, what I mean? and they can't do anything to me because um, you you can't you you have it's like being a made man or a made woman. You're, you cannot. You, you have to have just cause, and just cause cannot be her stand on righteousness. So that's what kind of I don't want to say untouchable, but it's kind of one of those things like Ugh, if you touch her, that's gonna be bad karma, and it always is. It always is because people attack and they think that they can get away with it, and then. They, they find I am, and then they're like, oh, wait a minute. You know what I mean? Type of thing. So it's, See, I mean, me, me, but I, they still I, get I pissed. Think, I think they can get to, it's just like people don't look at it at, at the more, uh, more significant. If the Illuminati in today's time and age wants to get to you, they're not going to like actually go out and hurt you. First of all, they're going to see how important no. you are. No, no, I mean, like, Say, say weird shit starts happening to you, like all of a sudden, you know, money ends up disappearing out of your bank account or uh, freaking the next thing. You know, You're losing your job. You don't have opportunities. Job, yes. Okay. And stuff like that. And, you know, people are. All your endorsements go out of the way. Yeah. No, you, trust you know, me. I mean, I, I, I think if, if an organization like that is going on, then those are the kind of things that are going on, that are happening, you know. Um, on a different scale now if it, if it was somebody that was important you know then that'd be something different but and, and don't get me wrong I, I, I don't believe that freaking the Illuminati were fairy tales I think that what I found is that no just, these people are not I mean, they just they just they, they, they did, it was created but there's no evidence showing that they went as far as what everybody makes them out to be but then again, secret societies have yeah, no. changed Absolutely. names. You know what I mean? They've always changed names. So different sectors. Different sectors. I mean, there's so many different branches and different branches are able to incorporate their own rules, which is why it's just kind of like how the how Washington DC is not a part of the United States but is in charge of the United States. It's kind of one of those things, you know what I mean? You got your you, you have your shriners, you have your skull and bones, you, I mean you, you you have your Prince Hall, like you have so many different People, different branches and like uh and, and, and from the masons themselves the mason from illuminati masons and honestly it's masons then illuminati people get tend to get that mixed up because they feel like the illuminati came first and then the masons kind of fall under that one but it's really again just a branch of people having a form or knowledge of power and understanding that what they can do with this form of knowledge of power same with even this crowley guy the stuff that he says the stuff that he does so true like people think 666 is such an evil number but 666 is not an evil number 666 is 18 yes it can be channeled for evil we understand that we understand who baphomet is but we also understand that we are baphomet within the inside it's just our lower level of life the only evil that exists is the evil that we are able to create if we do not create evil evil does not exist and that's just the truth so it's a choice to manifest and and, and to be able to actually associate with and understand and to kind of internalize and then project evil and and so it, it, it's not a a matter of this devil with horns and or some crazy looking goat like i remember for a long time i got a lot of backlash Beelzebub. because i you talking about bills huh when you when you mention the horns and stuff you're mentioning bills above he's the one that has the horns so, yes so. and but people feel like it, it's some guy with a pitchfork that's the thing they get mixed up so this is what i'm saying though because i got a long time i got backlash because i had a picture of Baphomet. because i mean not Baphomet, to say submit, yeah. but to understand who Baphomet is within me, because I have an evil side. I have a side of me that's lower light. We all do. And we can deny it all we'd like to, but it's not the truth. I stand in truth. The only true religion is truth. And that's another thing. I agree with this guy, Crowley. Like, yeah, he says some psycho stuff, but truth be told, the only truth is truth. Now, how they acquired their knowledge, this is my problem. No offense to anyone, but a lot of the knowledge and ancient teachings come from Africa, come from Melanie, and it is then taken, stripped, and kind of condensed, or or, or even, it, I don't want to say it's concentrated, it's not concentrated at all, it's kind of diluted, and it's kind of, we use it as a way to make, and it looks like when you hear the truth, that what you're saying isn't mean, because well, we heard this guy do it, and he was worshiping the devil, but who is the devil? He was, what, praising the fact that he recognizes his lower light self? He's showing you that he, this is the side of him, that who he chooses to be, and portraying it in a godlike concept? 
or a, a godlike image but the thing about it is that's where your discernment comes in you know who you are you know that you're not an evil person even if you've done evil things or maybe you associate with being an evil person like i said there's no such thing as evil it is only the lower light the opposite self when something quote unquote bad happens that's you projecting this bad situation and i do it a lot especially with relationships i'm really bad go too far off into the deep end but like i'm really really bad with okay um, you can show me one sign from something that I've already witnessed and I'm not watching this rerun. I'm going to change the whole channel completely. So now I'm not even who you expected me to be anymore because you showed me something I've already seen before. And I don't like I didn't like that show. So I'm going to show you something you don't want to watch anymore in order for you to turn away your attention. And then I can go back to my regular that's, schedule that's program. That's what it's all about, though. Like, even in today's world, I was telling you about sheeple, you know what I mean? And and what do you think I mean by the term sheeple? You know what I mean? How do you train freaking herd? Sleeping herd? people, sheep, how, how sleeping you, people. How do you train a freaking herd of sheep? You know, I, I mentioned that before too. And it's very simple. Yeah, you know what I mean? Nothing has to be complicated when it comes to this stuff. If you just open your eyes and you see things for what they really are. Okay. And i think that's a hard thing for people to comprehend because it has to be romantic it has to be exciting you have to have some kind of adventure in the things that you look for and the truth of the matter is is if you want to find a real conspiracy you look at the boring stuff you know these people aren't running around freaking trying to put things in front of your face so that you can see it they want to go back into the backgrounds and they want to uh, set things up in the background to make it to where you don't know what's going on okay so what they do is they go into these governments and they write up these boring freaking laws that freaking nobody wants to go through and read you know what i mean so, yeah it told me about it we civil all today and for history and like we all were born so we took a shortcut but no, yeah right you see what i mean take a shortcut nobody wants to read yeah. that shit <laughs> we took a shortcut because yeah. i wasn't gonna sit there <laughs> But, but, but that's where it is. But that's <laughs> where it is, and they, they can't relate that that <laughs> is actually a part of the conspiracy. You know what I mean? Like consent laws. All right. People, people today can finally agree that that consent laws exist. But there was a time where they're like, "You're so full of shit." And no, it, it's the truth. You consent to certain things when you freaking do things. Like when you go into a courtroom, if you don't have the money to freaking afford an attorney for yourself they'll give you one they'll give you this public defender and they'll they'll have him speak for you well, who you have to do the job for but let's see here's the here's i've won the, more cases for public defenders than public defenders have won for public defenders here, and that's not by choice here's the here's the clincher about that okay what a lot of people aren't aware of it's like when you get an attorney <laughs> you give up your right to speak to the court okay the attorney has to yep. speak for you on your behalf and you have to sit next to him and shut your mouth yep and swear on the bible but if you affirm and you present yourself what you're able to because we are sovereigns but we forget right. we don't realize that we're sovereigns like this is but a corporation here's another thing that's a, that go, it goes even further if you listen to these people run their mouth They'll also tell you that freaking anybody who tries to defend themselves in court is defending an idiot. You know, little comments like that because they don't freaking want you to go into court and speak for yourself. And be smart. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? They don't want you to educate yourself to what's being said in court. They want you to get a paid train trainer to come in and say the shit for you. You know what I mean? Because no matter what side you're on, they all work together. See, what happens is your lawyer is going to go to your public defender is going to go to lunch with his judge buddies and his, his other lawyer buddies on the other side. It doesn't matter. Plaintiff or defendant. In most cases, they're going to eat together. You're going to be the outcast. I learned this from, from having a, a ex-husband who lived in the judicial system. I mean, literally lived there. And so the stuff that I mean, we won more cases on our own just doing stuff in the law library library and me helping him and then him like i said doing a law library me doing my research then any lawyer has ever assisted us with it was me always doing his lawyer's job it was me finding the information and me telling him what laws need 
to be redirected. Yeah. I was lowering sentence, but because you have a lawyer, you have to present them all the information and have them present it to the court. That's right. why it's better to not have a lawyer. It's the same as standing right there. And like I'm never swear on a Bible. It's the same thing as sitting there. When, right when, yeah. Judge. Okay, if you're sitting in the courtroom, you can't say a word unless the judge asks you to say something, or if you, uh, your public defender asks for you to have the right to speak. Other than that, you just keep your mouth yep. shut. And uh, they don't always go to yep. lunch, man. They'll just step on back into the back room, make a quick decision, come out, and this is the way it is. You know, they don't even have to go to lunch together, so. It, you know, and, and, and that's my, the truth. My, they whole, don't... my whole point, though, is the fact that this is just one thing. This is one example, and people have a hard time understanding why that would be a, a conspiracy. And it's because it's trying to separate you from the giving up your right. Yeah, you're giving up your right. Yeah. You're, heard. yeah. you're yeah. giving up your rights. That's why it's a conspiracy. Consensually. Essentially yeah. saying, hey, you know what? I don't mind. You handle it for me. Like, it's like when my mom, like, well, uh, it's taking power of attorney. Like, it's the same thing. And then pretty much, and if you if you are aware of this, anyone in the medical field, my mother, like I said, is a physician. Anyone in the medical field with power of attorney, even if it's in cases of death, power of attorney rights actually extend through death if you're in the medical field only. So the only time it stops is if you're not in the medical field. But my mother being a physician and being power of attorney allows her to make choices after death of something that I may she may have had power of attorney over. It gives her that opportunity to make choices and say, oh, what do you mean? He's back alive? Well, let's give him well, some instead that, that type saying, of thing. That reaches to like exhuming the bodies and stuff too. So like say, they have to exhume a body that's... Wait, hold on. Your thing goes crazy. Say it again. Exhuming a body. Like, if, if you... Uh, if uh -oh. you are in the uh, medical profession and you have to exhume a body that's been put in the grave, then the, the physician can okay that. You know what I mean? So you have that going on as well. So, say somebody died and they don't have family members they can go to the physician and the physicians can give them the permission to exhume the body for robin melton so mm -hmm. stuff like that <laughs> which i mean I, i've actually heard of that i, I think that's kind of strange yeah it, it does it really and it makes you wonder but that's because they do so many like experiments and stuff um on corpses and there's so much of the sacrificing that we pretend is non-existent but the truth of the matter is this sacrifice exists so that way people can sustain their life because we are able to have a continuation especially when you're looking at like that's why i'm not an organ donor people are like oh you're so selfish you're not an organ donor but they're not going to attempt to save your life at all if you are an organ donor if you're an organ donor they're going to kindly tell your family they did everything they can if they feel like somebody who's a better fit because we're stocks and bonds we're all stocks and bond system the people the capitalists bet on what they feel like based on certain type of outcomes certain type of strategies implemented into our existences how we will respond to them and so whether or not this happens this person will still be successful but if this happens this person will no longer be successful if we put this into this factor and they it's it, literally the stocks and stock market and that's why we're a number that's our social that's uh, that's what our social is because well, again we're a corporation which is why all of our letters on our IDs are capitalized because you are a corporation. You will, um, if it's a proper noun, it's just going to have the first letter capitalized. Like, well, see, that's why I was talking about uh, Maxwell last week because you know how I was talking about birthing a ship number. Your a ship birthing in 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 the port. That's kind of what he was. Mm -hmm. That's what that's about, and like he believes that freaking we're we're actually being bought and still sold on the stock market and then our birth certificate is yeah we uh, are it's it's actually a receipt you know what i mean for goods to be bought mm -hmm. and sold um and like uh, it is it, he, he was actually he was with actually the of this. one that got me started on the whole uh consent thing because it was like uh he was one to or he, he's big on words okay and, and like they they manipulate words like the words that you hear in, in in law aren't the regular language that you hear on on the street you know what i mean or 
because they t they they want to change the terminology for each word so that they can come up with a certain way of talking with one another that ordinary people don't understand. You know, like consent. Mm -hmm. I'll trust and understand. It, you know, they they use the word consent for so many different things. A police officer can get consent from you because you're driving down the road with a freaking air freshener up on your rear view mirror that looks like a marijuana plant. You know what I mean? And once you sign something, that's why I always sign X. Like, I sign X on everything because she could because it's that. I sign X or scribble. But my, it's usually, it's, it, my school stems from an X. Uh, and then it kind of turns into a star. You like now? I could have a little bit there, but um, um, excuse me. I apologize. I'm really attempting to stay here for you, but it's just a lot of us are have a lot to say in regards to this. And so I've um, there's something called the history of the Illuminati. It's a documentary, and um, Adam Wist up. He says it. He says they will be, excuse me, they will be obtained chiefly by means of the schools and open hearty behavior, condescension, popularity, and toleration of their prejudice, which we shall at leisure root out and dispel. So basically, we're going to play you off your weaknesses. If you like to twerk, we're going to make that the most popular thing in the world. But really, we're going to uh, facilitate our seven billion down based off of all the people that's just spending their time twerking and showing their asses because we don't really <laughs> need that in real life. We don't need that. You know what I mean? We don't. Yeah. But we're going to make you feel like that's all we're into because we know for a fact that you're going to fall into this category and we can just whoop, wipe you on out with this hit. We can wipe you out with this hit. And so we start grouping people and we group you into your by your weaknesses and we group you together and, and feel like you're strong with your weakness, but you're just just lower levels of weakness weaknesses for us we just got weakness one weakness two weakness three we have what we're looking at and i say we and that makes me sound so bad but i don't know how to say it any differently because it's yeah. the truth but it's like we look yeah I, I just, yeah it's just i gotta tell the truth and so we look at it from the standpoint of who's willing to do this who's willing to do that this is how we're going to determine the population because it's going to be broken down i know people think we're going to say the world we're not we're going to get rid of the waste and if people don't like to hear that because then they think that the quote unquote rich people are the ones who are in it, but it's not. It's a mental thing. It has nothing to do with finances. People think it has to do with finances, but uh, I, the I rich people you. are not as smart. There's, there's there's finance involved in it. Now um like uh oh, well there is a lot. There's a significant amount, but that's not the reason because they know for a fact their money is not enough to sustain. Understand they have to have the mental capacity. These teachings, these powers, the stuff that they use to yeah, control people is what's that's important. Very important. But okay, um well, first of all, let me kind of say something, too, about, like, the Illuminati and what you just stated there. Um, like, everybody gets it confused, like, the Illuminati and uh, the Freemasons was the same. Mm -hmm. but, but the truth of the matter is, like, when that statement that you just read there came out, it alarmed, like, every Freemason organization all across Europe and it spread over to the United States and it got to the point where George Washington even made a warning to people here in the United States about the Illuminati in one of his freaking speeches okay they were terrified of the Illuminati but they just or they present it so yeah. that way you can disassociate them with they connection just, absolutely and, and, and the weird part is, is they just vanished without a trace um, they were the Germans were actually closing in on him because they wanted to freaking take him into custody because of the stuff he was uh, talking, and he just vanished. I mean, and uh, I, about Aliester Crowley too. Uh, he actually read uh, uh, ran the the Golden Dawn in the Freemasons. Okay, but. Before anybody gets carried away with that, you know, um, you have to understand that there was actually two separate uh, Golden Dawns. Like, the one that he ran was pretty much completely different than the original Golden Dawn. So, like, when he finally took over, there, there was a lot of changes that were done there. So, I think a lot of people need to understand that, too, when it comes to that. No. They're not disappearing without a trace. They're transforming. Just for the well, record, that's what People, I'm they, it, just even with Jeffrey Epstein they, and, they, and they Charlie the, Charles, they, they took, took the, the they, they took, took the stance of changing their names. They have no problems with changing names. Names are just 
you know and identities yeah they they, they could take on a completely new form like i think they're like i said i heard like they were talking about like elon musk says this like the being able to download a new body this has been going on long before elon musk has been putting it in publicized making it publicized like truth be told and we don't need all this technology and research that like he's putting way more work into it and effort into it than what is necessary because it's a natural process that you're able to commence it, it but and i mean like it, it to make it i guess more extravagant we add a whole bunch of shiny things to it but truth be told literally anyone can change their form and, and you, it, like we do it naturally and we do it daily but we don't recognize us doing it so that's what this connects us and that, that's what disassociate that's why we disassociate from it but the truth to be told like these people if if they get what that what happens is hey we have to have you teach we have to have you do something different okay so they they there is a consensus people are not really scared of their brothers and sisters but they have to present some type of fear in order for people to kind of like come on i got you come over here we, we, we're all scared come here come here come here but they're not really scared it's more so like look okay so now you now you can get away free i got their attention over here now go ahead transform and present the same knowledge but do it differently and that's what happens on a consistent basis so where we think that we're getting rid of these people but we're not again like i said they're just quote unquote downloading new bodies that, that goes back to what i was uh, i was mentioning that stuff before but the the thing that i was going to get at was the thing about the money okay um and the reason why i have to bring that up is because you got to also take another look at things like they, they at, at this, this point, point they had understood that there is no amount of manpower there's no amount of military that's going to be able to take over the world it is virtually impossible for freaking one human one country one anything to take freaking over the entire planet by force okay so they they learned that in order to freaking take over the world you don't have to freaking conquer, conquer countries. All you have to do is take and have the money to where you can take over their economies. Okay? And that is where it comes into play. They, they, they want to use that money and they want to use that intellect that they know together so that they can take over the economies, change things the way they want it, and manipulate it. Okay? It's, it, they, they don't have any desire whatsoever to freaking become king or queen or anything. That They know that if they freaking have the money, they can freaking tell any president, any king, anybody what to do. Okay? The man who, who, who owns the money owns the world. I disagree, but I mean, like, respectfully disagree <laughs> that, that we're going to have a different. I know better. Like, name one thing. Name I, one I mean, thing that's what they think. This, that's what they know. They like to prove world, that point. In this physical world, name one thing that is not dictated by money. Me. Well, Me. I mean, well, no, I mean, you said than, one. Other, other than yourself, okay? Just name. I mean, can you go down and freaking. My children. It? You know? Well, I mean. I mean, come up with. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Just, just think about it. I mean, those are simple things. Yes, but I'm telling you, did, did that's it. enough. I mean, that's enough. You know, I mean, there, there isn't one thing that isn't dictated by money. You know, every what? What do you think people go to school? They go to school, Most so people go to school because they would like to get a certain type of job in order for them to acquire a certain type of money. Yeah, that's the mentality being broken down. They're weak. So they're, this is presented. So I get where how you feel or why you feel mm -hmm. like the person with money is the one is in control because that's what we see. That's the standard that's been set. Okay, but well what happens when your money no longer means nothing? Let's if I blow a, you up and this whole entire world up, who are you going to pay? Let's take a look at the word standard. What is a standard? Okay. See, nobody ever wants to. Mm, norm, a norm, an implemented norm, or an implemented normality. Look it up. Look it up and see what you can find for just the word standard. Okay. People live off of standards, and they they sim they, they they live off of symbols. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just said an idea or thing used as a measure, norm, or model in compare. I just said that, an implemented normality. 
I just told you the definition, and I looked it up, and it is the definition. Now, is there anything else there that defines it? Is there a level of quality or attainment? Entertainment, right? Used or accepted as normal or average. Normal or average, far from it, so I would not be able to relate. They'll tell you that, right? They'll tell you that in, in that dictionary, but you know what a standard is? A standard is what was used during freaking battle that each leader of that freaking army had and certain officers within the army also had that standard and they would wave it above the uh, the freaking uh, battle to where freaking the leaders could tell where they were situated, okay, and then they could dictate where their troops would go to because they could see where the standards for each freaking group was okay and that's how they that's how they did combat they they used standards and symbols you see uh in england where they have freaking the red dragon and the black dragon and they have the freaking i want to go to england so bad the, the checkers all there's those, so many answers there all, all those are symbols and freaking all of those are freaking uh, standards. That was a standard that they carried with them. Do you see any definition for that? Established by authority, custom, or general consent as a model, example, or point of reference? No, I mean, what I just said, do you, do you see that as anywhere in that definition? That's what a standard is. I mean, yeah, I can... But, but yeah. it's not in the dictionary, see? It's, it's not in there. Because there's people who don't want you to understand that that's what a standard is. When you... When you that's crazy. It represents the sovereign and the unit United Kingdom. But sovereign means separate from, like, your own self individually. And that is the royal standard in England. Like, it's just wild because... Okay, the sovereignty is supposed to be the people as a whole, is, is what that's supposed to be, like, <laughs> which, it all sounds good on paper, but it's, uh, what, what, what they tout right there has never been achieved, like, no government's ever been ran by the sovereignty of its people, I mean, it just doesn't happen. You know, and uh, symbols, things like that, you know. Um, you're living in a world where everybody says you have to have standards and you have to symbolize something and stand for something and stuff, and they don't understand the words that they're talking about, what, what's coming out of their mouth, okay? What is a standard, okay? So, that's what I'm getting at. Like, a lot of, a lot of uh, this is wording you know what i mean and they want to change things to where the words don't match with what they actually mean they, um, that's why etymology is necessary I, I that's why when people like i said people love calling me black but black does not make sense based off of etymology of the word it only makes sense off of the quote-unquote it's standard for what people say it is but it's not the truth of what it is because black really means to be bleached pale so, I mean, if you're really looking, even like to be blessed means to be covered in blood. We don't know that, but we say bless you, cover me in blood. I mean, like they say that as a symbol, a symbolism of being covered with the Passover and making sure that there's blood over you for So you're okay. You're not, you're not, um, no, there no harm should come to you. And that's what bless is supposed to mean. But again, like I said, you look up the etymology of bless. It means to be covered in blood, just like black means to be bleached or pale. But we'll use this as the standard to define something and then only to find out that it's incorrect. And, you know, uh, the thing that I really, like I, I told you before, I, I'm not really big on, the, you know, Maxwell, but that's the one thing that I, I did take from them, like the manipulation of words and trying to make things to where it freaking uh, basically they can use words to freaking change people's outlook on things and how, how it's supposed to be like what 
what, what means, means something today isn't going to mean the same thing 50 years from now because they're constantly changing the words to fit. And, uh, like, uh, you take a look in history, all right? You uh, look at the word realist, all right? Today, um, we, 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 we call them socialists. And if, if, if you don't believe me, all you got to do is trace it back through history. When you hear people talking about being progressive, you know what I mean? When, when they say they're progressive, they're saying that they're socialist. That, that's all that means. It's, and then uh, the realist is where it started. Everybody says they're realists. Well, realist is another word that freaking changed from realist uh into uh in, into another word and then that word changed to another word and then eventually we come up with the socialist you know what i mean being socialist so that that's basically how it's it just because of comfort you know but that's whatever what makes people feel comfortable comfortable it's it's to hide the fact of who they are too you know what I'm saying? It's like they don't want you to know that freaking socialism is the same thing as what uh, realism was back in the freaking 17, 1800s. Because then you'd be uncomfortable. Right. I want you to be comfortable. That's it. That's a little bit. That's my shake my Yes, I forgot my little shit. Oh, that's it. Yes, come on. You see what I'm saying? Like, let me throw that shit in my. Back when uh, realism started out, what happened was is the. Uh, uh, romanticism, age of romanticism started up, and that was in re retaliation for realism. Um, these people wanted to uh, uh, come in and start criticizing people's folklore and their beliefs and stuff like that. And then the romanticists, like everybody hears the word romantic and they think that it's all about lovey dovey shit, you know, kissing and hugging and stuff. Yeah, and it's not. And, and it's not. It, it was uh, freaking the Brothers Grimm talking about Hansel and Gretel. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to yeah. tell you. Nobody wants to, <laughs> you know, nobody wants to tell you that freaking the story freaking wasn't as happy as what they think it was. They were abandoned in the woods by their parents. And it wasn't the evil mom. It was both of them. And there was no good dad out of it, and they come back, and he accepted them into the home. That that was never a part of the story. And the reason why he, they wrote that story was because that was happening in Germany. People were so poor that they freaking were abandoning their their kids into in the wilderness to starve to death. It was something that was actually going on. You see. That's insane. Yeah. And uh. Realists don't want you to know. I don't know. care how much I'm stuck. You know what I mean? Realists don't want you to know that stuff. They, they don't want you to know that freaking, uh, that these folklores actually are connected to something. They want you to think that they're just hoppy or poppycock and move on. Don't even think about it. Or they want to discredit history because it doesn't coincide with the freaking evidence presented, you know? So. That's what being uh, realist is, and that's what being progressive is, and that, you know, things like that. But it takes people actually doing the research and finding this stuff out to understand that's what it is, you know. Oh, you mean getting uncomfortable. They don't like to be uncomfortable. Right. That might make them actually have to do something. And with great knowledge comes great responsibility, oh, and history. people are lazy. You know history. what I mean? They'd rather just commit and submit to history is ugly. It's ugly the man with the money. The ugliest thing you can ever yeah. look at is history, man. Because there, there is nothing pretty about it. Okay, you're gonna go through different and real stages. history, not anything in these yeah. books. The real stuff, the doing the research like you do, the nitty gritty. Yeah, it, it's very disgusting. You're gonna run across things that you don't want to look at. You know, I, I I was really amazed. I've been committed since about 2011, and I, that like I mean I stopped when it gets to be too overwhelming and too consumed. Like yeah, guys, I'm 
last year, third year mastery. We're third year mastery now. And so when I say that it get, and it was in 2010, honestly, but when I say history and indulging and that completely submersing myself in the two these different concepts and allowing it to take me where I have to go in order for me to figure out what has to be known. Like it, it, it makes you uncomfortable. And if you're stuck, I don't like to say stuck in your ways, but you're used to a certain thing, it makes it a little bit more difficult to commit to. So I've taken plenty of breaks because when I get to feel like it's system overload and I have to process because wow, I never saw that coming type of thing, yeah. I'll take a break. But a lot of people, as soon as they see something they dis, um, disagree with, they walk away from it completely. And they don't never even, I, I, I love to learn. Like I love to know more about something that I know very minimum about. So for me, once I'm there and that door has been open, it's only right for me to walk through it, see what different type of room are behind here oh what's behind that door oh well that's a pretty flower it's like being at the flea market i mean it's a whole bunch of stuff all because i went to this one location it's like being on mines well like with history i i treat it like a lot of other things that i learned like um there was a thing that was explained to me about um, have you ever heard of you know the box and being in the box a lot of people like the that. only box i've ever heard about was okay well i've heard it used as slang but the only box i ever heard about was like the one on the airplane we're not talking about that one no no, no. Mm -hmm. what it is is basically you know everybody's in a box okay oh and, yeah and, and the thing is is everybody who's in that box and this pretty much is everybody but they they want to stay in that box because they feel safe and secure now <laughs> every once in a while they'll step outside of the box but then they get scared and they run back to the box yeah because it makes them feel comfy okay because that's their comfort now it's okay to have the box okay and a lot of people get that mixed up they think that that's their experience but it's okay to have that box it's also okay to step out that box and do something new and drag the box along with you no, just in I case mean, you have to run back to it. If, it. if it gets out of hand, go back to that box. But the, the key to it is always remember that you still need to leave the box and, and try to learn new things. You know what I'm saying? Don't get stuck to where you're in that box, not willing to step out of it and learn something new. And that's how I've had to do with history because... I mean, I think everybody does it. Like you, you go through and you read that stuff and it just, it gets really overwhelming. But what I did is I just went back to the box. And when I felt comfortable enough to go back and look at it, I'll step out of the box and I'll learn something new. But until then, I'm okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You know? Because that's that's how a lot of people have to deal with it. It's just that simple. I mean, oh yeah, no, everyone's not going to be on the same learning curve, and everyone's going to value different importance for different aspects of learning. So some people might be financially fluid in banker stuff, where other people might be um, extremely fluid in being an electrician. Electrician, or I mean, there's different things that people are going to commit and submerge themselves with and just like kind of focus their time and their attention on and their education and their and their just willingness to engage with so th that's normal if we all did the same thing we would be a pretty lame society we see where 85 percent of us do the same thing but there's still that 15 percent that are doing different things and the way that 15 has been broken down has changed dramatically because a lot of these new generations are finding out about what 10 percent of us have done and said hey this is not so great and so that's what's creating your your initial one percent everyone sees it as this is what it is without really doing the work to figure out how like we're still looking outside. We're looking at what other people wrote about. We're looking at what other people said. How did this people person view this? We're still not looking at the answer, looking for the answers in the correct places. We're all still looking at answers from man. From but but, but the answers are not going to come from these old findings or these old. They, they, the, it'll guide us, but the ultimate guide is ourselves, and that's what we have to stop being so afraid of. Afraid of learning for ourselves, reconnecting with our intuition because we're afraid to do that. We're told that that gut feeling is something to be ignored, and you should just use your mind, use your brain. But sometimes your mind is not the one with the answers that answer is coming from something different that answer is coming from 
you or your experiences, that answer is able to be and you're able to contribute to that answer based off of your connection to yourself. So you can become that scholar, that philosopher that people are reading about because you actually put forth See. the work. You're not reiterating someone else's work. See, you're that, that, that goes back to what I'm saying too, or I've said it before. Like there's a difference between being taught and learning. Okay. Mm -hmm. You yeah. said that yesterday, mm -hmm. and you might have said it more than that, but I know I heard you say it yesterday. Okay. Now what I'm referring to there is like. Um, there there's it's really hard to find people who honestly want to learn i mean and a lot of these kids in school are the same way you know why they go to school they go to school because first Money. of all their parents are forcing them to go to school and yep. the reason why they're being forced is because there's a school system that tells you if you don't send your kids to school you're going to go to jail all right so they're being forced into school and after they get forced into school, they're only doing what they're freaking being told to do. Because they Which just so we can clear that misconception, you can send your kids to homeschool. You just may or may, depending on they, what county you have to see, register. But see, what it comes down to is that they don't actually genuinely want to learn, like for the sake of learning, all right? No. My, my whole point is this, okay? If you get out of high school and you get out of college and you get into your job and you're still or you're, you're not still learning, trying to make a physical effort to learn something, then the only thing you were doing is going to school so that you could be taught what to do. You were to be submissive. Mm -hmm. You were taught to freaking stand in line and do what you're told. And yeah, obedience. Mm -hmm. Direct they're, obedience, and that's what it is. And, and then it's like, and that's on purpose. These people, their parents are being system. obedient to the system. Yep, they they set this system up on purpose so that children are being taught. They that we're not teaching them to freaking go into school and actually want to learn something. You see what I mean? They're not even presenting the knowledge in a way that is makes it to where you would like to learns not to everyone because you get those few people that are very interested in the way it's presented but there in most some. cases it, yeah there are some who love to but it, you, you get to places to where it's like they're doing it just so that what even that's with the testing they have them take the, these tests these standardized tests that are supposed to test how much you know but truth be told how much are you utilizing we're not teaching them anything that's necessary for sustainability it's teaching them what's necessary to cooperate with the system our corporation that has been created and we have to have employees for it so we're te teaching you how to be a good employee and unfortunately when you get people that are telling them this it's because well, hey listen they don't have the shiny money don't listen to them this look 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 if you listen to me you get this but they don't t i mean like people will go to their job they'll commit to it. i'm going to be a doctor my mom like i said she's a doctor for the longest time that's all she was going to do like, I'm just going to be a doctor. I mean, it took, it was like pulling teeth to get her to think a little bit outside about, like, you're a doctor, use it more. So then I started, like, I, I was really big on teaching, like, holistic. I've been like that. My mom was not so much, but she always told me, by all costs, by all means, avoid doctors. Doctors are scammers. This is my mother, the doctor, telling me, like, you, the, we do this for money, and this is what we do it for. We don't, most doctors are not doing it to help people. But in I, like I said, with a much encouragement, she opened her own family practice to focus more on being more helpful. Because where she was at, she was not helping people. And she realized that. She was not helping people. She was basically taking their money. And so mm -hmm. for me, when I hear an actual physician in this position saying, this is what we are trained to do. And then finally getting the balls, excuse me, mother, to separate herself from that type of system. But she still, she still falls victim in other places. But we're not going to count her flaws. I'm just going to praise her where it's due. At least she was willing to take that step. Use her power to be able to separate. Hey, I know that that's not right. Instead of always prescribing phar pharmaceuticals, being able to provide, provide and pr prescribe holistic options. Because who she was working for before that was unacceptable. You were not allowed to give holistic alternatives for medicine and healing. You had to write a script for them to go see your neurological friend or your, 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 your and whoever. You had to give them a referral to somebody else in the medical field, in the medical department. Or, and we prefer psychiatrists. They had on-site psychiatrists because psychiatrists. 
They don't counsel. What psychiatrists do is prescribe. And I, I have Dr. Hubs. I remember him like I can see him right now. And he was on like the type of doctor he was. He was a doctor, but the type of doctor he was, he focused on giving my DL or I want to call him a DL. I might be wrong if I'm saying the initials wrong. But my mom explained to me his position in the company. Like I said, I have a lot of insight from being on the inside, not from, oh, I wonder what that's like. Let me watch it on TV. No, 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 for living it, from living it in my life and not, you understand, and, and understanding yeah. what should be repelled and rejected and what should be incorporated and accelerated and expanded. And so with me understanding this concept, I understand the misconceptions that people have and that are here and that are presented in order to keep us in a bondage. Because again, who's going to pay for it if we give you your power? If I give you your power, you're going to use your power for you. If you're if you understand your power, you're definitely going to show up to work tomorrow. You're not you're not going to give a crap about me being the man with the money because you understand your power. You can create an existence in which power has no, money has no power over you. You are able to do that, but it's not norm, It's not the standard. So as long as it's not the standard, you're not going to do it. And as long as I continue to present to you that this is what is necessary and make it the dominant feature that you're always viewing, then you will have no choice but to believe that that's all there is. I'm not even giving you a little bit of ray of light on this corner of the spectrum to where you could actually do something different. Because how does that work for me? How am I benefited in that case? Well, I want to uh, bring it to an end right now because it's at like an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> we always do this. You would yeah. go over it. That's why on Saturday I'll be completely quiet because I don't oh, know no, nothing. It's fine. We're, we're having actually a good conversation. This is the kind of stuff that I really get into. And I, I, I like hearing you talk, so don't ever do that, okay? I appreciate it. Okay. And uh, I uh, want to tell everybody if they want to come in and they want to get involved and be a part of the conversation, they're more than welcome <laughs> here. Um, yeah, I tag some people because, like, come on, like, I mean, there's going to be no change without participation, so, I mean... We got we got people in here who actually have pretty good topics that they could talk about if they wanted to talk about it. So that I'm just going to leave it up to them. You know, if they like what they hear or if they they, they want to contribute, then do so. You know, show up and we'll we'll have it. Um, so with that, One big mm -hmm. with that, I'm going to end this and I'm going to say thank you for joining me again, Karma. Okay. In time, yeah, you're on my schedule now. Six o'clock to seven, I am. Yep, you're, you're on my schedule. I love your show, so yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Be safe. You too.